Thank you. Thank you very much. We're live uh, with the Deputy President uh, William Ruto. I think where I should start is to say thank you about the shoe. <laughs> thank you very much. Sour, sour. Thank you. Sour thank you. Good. And we were talking about, uh, before we took the break, we were talking about your relationship with uh, <coughs> President Uhuru Kenyatta, with whom you are running mates in the 2013 and 2017 election. Put this matter to rest tonight, Dr. Ruto. What went wrong? Um, I think the style changed, you know, and I, and I have told you that uh, it is uh, the prerogative of the president being the boss, and you know the boss is right, yeah, to change the style of how he wants to uh, deliver the program that we have and government business. And we had a different style from 2013 to 2017. In, uh, from 2017 this way, I think two major things happened. Um, we had a plan. We sat down. We got professionals to sit down with us because we had the first plan was to lay the foundation. That's why we did the SGR, we did the roads, we did the electricity, we did the TVETs and education. The, the, the second phase of our plan was now to build on that foundation and transform lives, create jobs, create businesses, deal with healthcare through the universal health coverage, uh, uh, food security and manufacturing to create jobs and housing. Uh, and I think uh, because of change of style and uh, new advisors and new players uh, were brought into the picture, the priorities changed. Now it became Handshake and BBI. Uh, the whole Big Four uh, agenda uh, kind of took a back banner or, or it, it slowed down. And so there were new players, you know, so uh, my space, the space I occupied uh, before, was taken up by other people who were now advising the president on how to move things forward. And also, um, the priorities changed uh, because now it became urgent to change the constitution. No. And we've been at it now for four years. Mm -hmm. You know, we've been at it. And unfortunately, our original plan of creating jobs, of creating businesses, of universal health coverage has taken a beating. And, and, and uh, that, that's what happened. And mm. you know, uh, uh, when, when the president decides that he wants to change the priorities of his administration or change the people he wants to work with, that's his, uh, that, that's his prerogative, and I uh, respect that. Yes, and I'll take you back to B uh, Bomas of Kenya sometime last year yes. for what is taken <coughs> by many, including myself, mm. as the president's side of the story. Mm. He gave an analogy yes. that this is a relay. Mm. He has the button right now, Correct. and he's supposed to pass it to you yeah. We suggested that mm. at the right time. And what he said is, you want the button a bit too early. Mm -hmm. If we are to um, <laughs> o open that analogy up, it means you've been overly uh, eager to run for president, talking about your 2022 uh, presidential bid, apparently to his, to his discomfort as he, as he expressed in Bomas. Well, uh, that's how the president views it. I view it differently. There is absolutely nothing I have done differently from 2013 to now. But after 2017, and nobody complained about going to launch government projects, going to uh, inspect uh, government projects, facilitate government activity at, in every part of the country, from 2013 to 2017, I did that. But after 2017, it became problematic to some people. 
and some people started to raise issues. Why are you going to launch a government road? Why are you going to lo launch a TVET project? Why are you, I haven't changed the style of my politics. And I told them, and I, and I even sat down with the president one time and I told him, this is my style, this is me. You found me this way. I have worked with you this way from the time we started. And uh, the reason why uh, the president paired up with me, he had many choices, is because he knew my capacity. He knew what I can do. And unfortunately, immediately after the election in uh, 2017, uh, some team, a cabal of sorts, came up with a stop Ruto movement. And uh, you, you heard it. Uh, Morades of this world uh, started to say uh, all manner of things that we are going to create a movement to stop Ruto. And they executed their plan. They started first to try and demonize me. Oh, William Ruta is corrupt. Oh, uh, we are going to do a lifestyle audit. They went ahead to remove anybody who has a semblance of being a friend to me in government. They went ahead to remove everybody who had a semblance of being a friend of William Ruto in every committee in parliament leader of majority in National Assembly, leader of majority in uh, Senate, whips, what? All that happened, you know, um, but I took it in, in its strides. Many of them, I think, uh, thought that uh, by uh, trying to humiliate me, I would um, throw tantrums and uh, maybe uh, take on the president or uh, do those other things. But I am seasoned. I have, I have been here for a while. I am no longer a young man. I understand many things differently. No. And, and I know uh, that uh, this is just a seasonal thing, you know? And I know the place of a deputy president. You, you're vulnerable, you, you're prone to uh, people who have the presidents here uh, and, and actually the trying, accusation trying to the, the, the accusation you of yes. all manner of things and the accusation deputy president is actually that you don't know the place of a deputy president I do. and that in the first term mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you are a sort of co-president mm -hmm. i have never been i know my place and i want you and i, and I even asked the president my boss this I want it, uh, any information to be produced that I have done in private or in public to disrespect the president or to elevate my, uh, myself beyond what my duties are. And the president was candid with me. He told me there is no such information because the director of intelligence was sitting there. I told the director of intelligence, can you tell, can you produce any information that you have that in private or in public, I have disrespected the president or tried to be the person I'm not, both in public and in private, if there is one person who has shown respect to President Uhuru Kenyatta is myself. And I, I am very clear in my mind that um, very many uh, uh, deputy presidents are fought. It is an unfortunate uh, situation. And given an opportunity, I would not allow my deputy president to be humiliated the way former Deputy presidents have been humiliated, and the way I have been humiliated, I will not allow. Back to the analogy of the relay race and the baton, <clears throat> do you think it is over as far as President Kenyatta passing the baton to you in next year's election? Considering some of the statements he has made, including when he had a meeting in Sagana where he said that, and this was an insinuation, 
that he's not going to leave leadership to thieves. What did you think he meant? <laughs> Maybe you should ask him. But uh, let me take you back, uh, Linus. The people of Kenya will elect the next president. The next president is not going to be appointed, right? And that's why I have been very categorical. When I decided to support President Uhuru Kenyatta, I did not give him any conditions. I did not tell him, I am supporting you so that you can support me. No. I did not tell him that when you finish, you should hand over the button to me. I did not. I knew very well that if I were to run, I would have to assemble myself and face the people of Kenya with an agenda, right? So, not just me. I don't think anybody should expect to be appointed president of Kenya or to be given the presidency of Kenya by anybody. It is the people of Kenya who will decide. And, um, you know, there has been a narrative that has been built um, because the president said that Yangu Kumi, Yaruto Kumi, right? I have never said that kind of a statement. It is the president who has said, and the president is an adult. He can change his mind. You, you know? think he's changed his mind? I mean, he's entitled to change his mind. Do you think he's changed his mind? I, I, I don't know. Maybe you should go. Maybe somebody, maybe you yake should kumi, ask him. Kumi. Do you think it's... <laughs> no, I mean, that was his statement. And you know, I am saying the president is entitled to change his mind because he's an adult, right? And I, have n I will not take no offense because he owes me nothing, right? I chose to support Uhuru Kenyatta when many people did not want to support him, right? And I chose to support him because in him, I saw that I can build a partnership that will transform Kenya. And we have made tremendous progress. We have not, maybe on a scale of uh, one to 10, maybe we, we, we didn't get 10, maybe we got seven, but that's a good pass. Right? So I, uh, I, I'm very clear in my mind that um, uh, the president remains my friend, whether he supports me or not. We have a relationship. We've been together since Kanu days. We've worked together. We've been taken to Hague together. We've done many things together. We've run government together. We, uh, so so uh, he remains uh, my friend. Whether he supports my bid, that is if I run for president next year, or if he does not. And I have said categorically that the president owes me no debt. That if he doesn't support me, I will take no offense. And I am very clear in my mind that it is the people of Kenya who will decide who the next president will be. Right, and you say you have a relationship, <clears throat> but politically speaking, mm. the conversation we've had from the beginning of this interview up to now has mm. painted the picture of a clearly irredeemable sort of political relationship. You sit here as an isolated deputy president because it doesn't give you any formal roles. We don't see you in government functions and things like that. You also locked out of the Jubilee headquarters uh, here in Nairobi, and uh, the Secretary General, uh, Rafael Tuju, made it clear that you're not welcome to that building. Mm. So the question tonight, DP, is what are you doing in the Jubilee administration? You're not wanted, are you? You know, I was not elected deputy president by Rafael Tuju. I was elected deputy president by the people of Kenya. Right? 
So I occupy this office by virtue of the decision of 8 million Kenyans who voted for Uhuru and myself. And so, whether I'm locked out of uh, Jubilee headquarters, and uh, that's a very emotional thing for me, um, many people don't understand the history of Jubilee. We came from a very bad past where politics was prosecuted on the platform of ethnicity and hate and division. President Uhuru Kenyatta and myself sat down and said, even if we don't win the election, we must sort out the politics. That's why we brought together almost 12 political parties to form Jubilee. And we created a, a monumental political party. And God was on our side because we have 173 members of parliament elected in our party. But deeply that's history now, isn't the, it? The, the, the next political you, you party can't go is to ODM with 70, uh, 172. We have a hundred, a whole hundred more members of parliament compared to the next political party. Who are today, the, the members of parliament you're talking about, who are today <coughs> divided into factions, mm -hmm. two factions, one faction that support the president and one that supports uh, you. And uh, maybe at this point you may want to uh, make it clear as well. Mm -hmm. You are dalliance with a new party called the United Democratic Alliance, mm -hmm. whose members or members of parliament that are affiliated to it are also known to be your allies. Are you in <coughs> Jubilee or are you in UDA? I'm elected deputy party leader of Jubilee, right? Jubilee, and I told you this very emotional to me because I have invested a lot of time, a lot of energy, a lot of effort, a lot of emotion in building Jubilee as a party. People who have no clue why we assemble the, this party to be able to create a platform where we can transform the politics of our nation not to be about this ethnic community versus that ethnic community but about issues have taken hostage the party and dismembered it right they have um, engaged the party in a vicious fight i go to jubilee headquarters as a deputy party leader right i mean and then they say uh, the deputy party leader is persona non grata. Really? Okay. Then we have this, we've, we've never had a meeting of the party. We can, have never had a meeting of the PG. I am a member of NEC. I am a member of every organ of the party. Not a single meeting. The only meeting that takes place is a meeting where members are lectured, and where members are expelled. Today, Jubilee as a party is at war with women members of parliament. We have, I think, five or six senators, women. They are at the verge of being uh, thrown out of the party. We have persons living with disability. We are representing people with disability. The party wants to throw them out. We have the only minority, Ogiek, in the Republic of Kenya. For the first time, they got a nomination to Senate. The Jubilee Party wants to throw them out on account that they did not attend a meeting. Really? When a party acquires tendencies of expelling these, fighting with women, fighting with people with disability, fighting with minorities, fighting with his, with his membership, then the party is headed in the wrong direction. And you see, I have tried, I have tried all I could to try and see whether we, this can be worked out. 
Unfortunately, it's difficult because uh, uh, the people who call the shots, uh, the Morades of this world and all the other characters there are hardly sober. You know, they appear on national television drunk. That's the level of impunity they have reached. And so it becomes necessary as a, as a leader to think, you know. Uh, so, so I still hope that maybe something will happen and we can salvage Jubilee and put it in, in, in a place where it can have the original vision. But in the event that that does not work out, I mean, my friend, we have to have a plan B, you know? Uh, for us, it, we, 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 are, we are lucky because we have a sister party now called, uh, what you have said, the UDA. In the event that Jubilee is not available, I have had some of the uh, people there uh, say, oh, uh, we will not even allow Ruto to run on this uh, party. We will not allow, allow all these other people. You know, a party that cannot field a candidate, you know, for parliamentary seats. It's become a trophy of some sort, right? So you call you're calling UDA a sister party. Yeah, yeah. There is a coalition that's, agreement that suggests. Between, yeah, there is a coalition agreement between UDA and, uh, and, and 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 Jubilee. Okay. So in the event that Jubilee is not available, the next best option is UDA, which has which shares, uh, because uh, U, uh, UDA has been working with Jubilee uh, from before. So I, I think it's the next best option, but it will become an option if Jubilee decides that they don't need, and if they continue with the expulsion spree that is currently going on, I mean, you have to think, my friend uh, 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 Linus, we have to think. And how far that thought is what I'm interested in, uh, how far the thought of living Jubilee I have, is, because I you, have you've, you've enumerated many members of parliament <laughs> are not as patient as I am. So many members of parliament have opted and have decided that <laughs> it's time to leave. I am, I, I, I am the last person left standing, you know? Uh, but many members of parliament have decided, no, I mean, we have to think about our future. Maybe the deputy president uh, uh, can cushion himself somehow. So, and I can't, it's not, for, it's not in my place to decide for members of parliament. These are people who are elected independently of me. They are elected by their own people, by their own electorate, and they make independent decisions. So um, th that's maybe what you're, what you're referring to. Now, Deputy President, you spoke of these tribulations and said mm -hmm. it's not new for a Deputy President, mm -hmm. and, and before you there are Vice Presidents to, mm -hmm. be, to be fought. Mm -hmm. And um, one that we would remember in history is that of uh, the Vice Presidency of Jaramogi Oginga Odinga, mm -hmm. uh, which ended in 1966. Mm -hmm. When it becomes untenable, what we have seen in the past, and what we see elsewhere is, people resign. They say, it's not working for me in government and in the ruling party, I resign. Do you have intentions to invoke Article 148.8 and say, as DP, I'm resigning? I am not yet there. Because uh, there are people who believe that uh, they can push me to resign. That, that's the whole uh, scheme. You know, let 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 let's humiliate uh, William Ruto. Uh, let's deny him access to this. Let us cut the budget of his office. Let us uh, do this. Let's do the other. Uh, but you see, I want to remind uh, those uh, people that I was elected. The electorate in Kenya went to polls to elect me alongside President Uhuru as uh, President Uhuru and Deputy President William Ruto. 
I am not going to give them the opportunity for them to celebrate their effort to push me out of this government. I will not give them that chance. And is it gotten as bad as the level of taking different vaccines? Mm -hmm. AstraZeneca mm -hmm. is here through the COVAX program and government is <coughs> rolling it out free of charge. And the position of government is vaccines will be free of charge for all, all Kenyans. Do you support that position? And if you do, don't you think it was problematic in terms of the optics that you give as deputy president of this country that you chose a commercial vaccine? Linus, we are in the middle of a very serious pandemic. Yeah, we are in the middle of a very serious pandemic. L lives have been lost. Livelihoods have been lost. We are in dire straits. Our economy is beaten because of this coronavirus. Many countries are doing everything possible to get their people vaccinated. Many countries are looking for every available vaccine, type notwithstanding. This type, that type, that, the other type. Many countries have four, five, six, seven different vaccines being rolled out in their countries because the most important thing now is not a debate about which vaccine. The most important thing now, because I have heard very unfortunate statements, people trying to say, oh, Sputnik is more expensive than AstraZeneca. What are you saying? I, I, I saw one of a person who is supposed to be a serious leader in Kenya to try and say, oh, you know, I took the cheaper vaccine. Uh, by the way, the policy of government is that every Kenyan is going to be vaccinated free of charge. So the issue of price doesn't arise, right? So let's, let's get it fast from the realm of petty politics. Oh, this vaccine is better than this. This vaccine is more, is, is more, is more expensive than that. That's a whole hogwash, right? We must, it is my position, that we should not curtail the moment we start to say it is only one vaccine, you begin to introduce the cartel mentality. We must open up the space. We must give opportunity for us to access every available vaccine because, Linus, we decided in cabinet that because we have a million vaccines, let us allow frontline health workers, policemen, and, and other people who are in, in the vulnerable group, people who are aged uh, 58, 50, and, 58 above. and above, yes. to take the first, the, first, the first line, right? When the president uh, then decided that um, it was time for him and cabinet to take the vaccine, I think inadvertently somebody forgot to invite me. So I wasn't, I wasn't, I, I, I was, I, I was not available uh, during that exercise. And I'm not blaming anybody. Maybe some secretary there forgot to uh, to, to inform me. And and I know very well from where I sit that we have a million vaccines. I know very well that. If I did not go to a state house, I have a choice of going to queue in the, in the, in the, in the, in the health center next to uh, my residence here. But what, what would that do, right? I would maybe probably take a vaccine that would have been taken by a Mamamboga or somebody else. Uh, Linus. The vaccine that I took costed 7,000 to a deputy president. You want to tell me I cannot pay 7,000 shillings for a vaccine that is available? 
Not because it's different, not because it's expensive, but because we have a million vaccines and we have to vaccinate 20 million Kenyans. For, for you, it, would, for it, your, it should not your, be an issue your, of cost. For your information, for yeah. your information mm -hmm. it is my position. Yeah? And if I were asked to articulate my position, we should have every available vaccine type notwithstanding. We should encourage the private sector, as so long as it's approved by government, the private sector to roll out. Let Kenyans who can afford to pay, pay. Let those who cannot afford, uh, we, should, we should even bring it to Nyayo Stadium. What the most important, the most important exercise we should be engaged in now is the vaccination exercise. We should spend every coin as government and anybody else who can afford to make sure that we are vaccinated because that is the only way once we have vaccinated almost 70 percent of kenyans that's the only way we will open up this economy you, as we talk today you, people are hurting families are sleeping hungry you know while we are having a, a debate as to eh, why have you taken this vaccine why haven't you taken this vaccine by the way, Sputnik was approved by the government of Kenya, right? And, and I was ready, you know. If I had uh, been invited, I, I, because, because it was uh, important for the president to, to, to be vaccinated in public, I was vaccinated in public. I did not announce that I, do, I, 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 I got somebody from the private sector to come and, and vaccinate me. I did not announce that I paid. And this, is not, this is not to interrupt you, DP, but you speak of a cabinet meeting yeah. and a cabinet decision around this vaccine issue. Mm -hmm. And my assumption is you attended that cabinet uh, meeting. Why didn't you articulate these positions there? It was not, there was no debate about which vaccine. You know, there was no debate. The debate was introduced by people who are petty, you know? Or, you know, uh, there is a better vaccine. So these people who are saying the government bought a cheaper vaccine, are they saying that the government bought a lower quality vaccine? What are they saying? You know, they are actually insulting us in government. The issue of cost does not arise. Every Kenyan, irrespective of whatever vaccine, and I am sure that soon we should be registering Johnson & Johnson, we should be registering Pfizer, we should be registering other vaccines, because there is clearly a, a scramble for vaccines. It is not time for us to choose whether it is this vaccine or the other vaccine. The most important thing in the world today, what countries are doing today, is to get any vaccine. Germany has registered Sputnik. And, and what you're saying... AstraZeneca. What you're saying... registered Johnson & Johnson. What you're saying, DP, is not different from what the Ministry of Health is telling us. All the Ministry of Health is saying is the vaccination, mm -hmm. the vaccines have to be brought through government, mm -hmm. either through COVAX, AU, you can access from the, the African Union, or government to, to, uh, to, to government. That is where the point of contention is. I don't think the ministry is saying you can't do and, um, and, and other nobody, vaccines. And, and nobody is arguing with that. I am not arguing with it either. It is just that when I, when I, when I, when I wanted to be vaccinated, the person who was available, you know, without me going to take the vaccine that would have been taken by Mamamboga, was, was a person who had a, a, a Sputnik uh, vaccine. And it was approved by the government of Kenya. But, but, but now that the government has banned it, I have no problem. You know, I am not, I'm not pushing that uh, Sputnik should be, should, be, should, be, should, should be used as a vaccination. If the government has decided that it is... It, it has been banned for whatever reason. I don't know. I, I want us right? to take a break. Maybe but, but, when, uh, yeah. when I meet the Ministry of, of Officials, of, they, 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 will, they will give us some sound reasoning yeah. and uh, that it is different that other countries are, buy, are buying all the, all the array of vaccines, but in Kenya we will only buy one. Maybe we have a good reason, and I have no problem with that. But in my own judgment, 
I do not think we should be discouraging the private sector. I think we should be partners with the private sector, with government approval. I think the government should, should not hold you know, the, the, the vaccines. I think the government should approve. Once the government approves, let the vaccines be available. And you're part of that government. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, so uh, let the government approve. Yeah. And, and that is what we, well, that's what I thought. We're going to take a break shortly, but twice or thrice now you've made reference to going to that Mamamboga, take a vaccine with mm -hmm. Mamamboga. <laughs> Are you still a hustler? Oh, but oh, I am the chief hustler. <laughs> Because the right thing would have been to take the Mamamboga vaccine. There is no Mamamboga vaccine. There is only vaccines, for your information. The Mamamboga vaccine is a story created by people who are deficient. No, no, you spoke about it yourself and no, said... No, no, I'm saying... Yeah, you, you just said I am, your option would have been to go line up with Mamamboga. No, I say... Is there anything wrong with that? No, no, no. The option I said, I would have gone and taken a vaccine that a Mamamboga would have taken because it is free. I am here as deputy president and surely I can pay 7,000. I have seen some of my colleagues, some of my competitors uh, say, oh, you know, uh, William Ruto took the expensive vaccine and yet he claims he's a hustler. You know, if I ask them, so if they become sick, Will they go to, go to Kenyatta Hospital? So you will find them in Aga Khan. And you will find them in Nairobi Hospital. You know, let, let's, be, let's be realistic. If you are in a position to pay for something, for heaven's sake, you know, make a contribution. Allow the other people who are not in a position to pay to get the government vaccine. Because in any case, we have 20 million Kenyans to vaccinate, which today, by today, I think we have vaccinated 550,000, right? At this rate, we will take years. We actually need a much more comprehensive program on vaccination so that we can finish the vaccination in two or three months. Right. We must have vaccinated 20 million Kenyans. Right. And that yeah. is the plan we should have. Yeah, that's President. the most important plan yeah. at this point in time. Thank you, Deputy President. We'll talk about that plan and others on the other end of this short break.